What happened to Mia's room? The accusation is false. And she is my wife. I will not be silent. Can this man do nothing but evil? I request a duel to the death. If you lose this duel, your wife will be burned alive. He will answer for what he has done. Confess! The last duel. And that is a clip from The Last Duel, uh, the new drama from the legendary director Sir Ridley Scott, stars Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Adam Driver and Jodie Comer. It's out in cinemas across the UK from October 15. Very delighted to say that uh, Ridley and Jodie are joining me from different uh, places. Uh, mm. Jodie, good afternoon. Where are you? Where are you? Good afternoon. I'm in London. Probably oh, okay. too far away from you. All right. No, no, that's right. Sir Ridley, hello. Good afternoon. Where are you, sir? I'm in France. Uh, it's very nice to see you both. And Mark Kermode was reminding me, Ridley, that the last time I think you were on this program, you were in a radio van uh, and you and the van got a parking ticket while you were speaking to us. And we got interrupted by, by someone knocking on the window, apologizing for giving you a ticket. So I'd forgotten yeah. uh, until that moment. It's probably because you went on so long. <laughs> That, that, that could well be right. Anyway, uh, it's very nice to see you. Thank you very much, Adi, for spending some uh, time with us. Um, Ridley, do you want to set up the last duel and how this story came to you? Yes, the story, you know, I had a very marvelous experience with Matt Damon. We made a film called The Martian. And, um, uh, and from that, I think, you know, you gradually go your own ways and yeah. you try and keep in touch. And I hadn't heard from Matt for a while. It's about four or five years ago, actually. Then Matt came on out of the blue and said, listen, how are you doing, dude? That's you. All it starts with, how are you doing, dude? And then, <laughs> um, I know you've done the duel once already. And I, when I read this story, this slender book, it's called The Last Duel. And so I immediately thought of you. And would you be interested in, in, in a funny kind of way, partnering with me and Ben? because we want to make this as, as soon as possible. And he then recounted the story itself and the, the court drama itself. And I'm going to have Jody because it's a woman's film. I want to have her underscore the center of what it's about. But the most interesting thing about the story was, which is fundamentally, was it rape or was it adultery? And what we do and what they decided to do, not me, they want to do, if, if you like, like a Rashomon idea of going through that particular event three times, seen from the point of view of, of Legree, Adam Driver, the point of view of Lady Carouge, Jody, and a very jealous husband. That, to me, gave it a really interesting turn to make it very special. So... But from that, I'm going to hand to Jodie to yes. say from her point of view. Yeah. Jody, where do you, yeah. Explain your explain your character and how and how you you fit into this into this story. Well, I think what was really interesting for me was that there was this book about this you know this kind of last sanctioned trial by combat, and it was about what had happened to this woman. Yet there was so little information about her. Um, so what really kind of enticed me and excited me was the opportunity to give her a voice, you know, at the heart of this story is ultimately about a young woman who testifies that she is raped by a friend of her husband's and she, she stands up and she speaks publicly and she, she fights for justice. Um, so that was really interesting to me. Also just reading the script for the first time and yes. seeing the format and the, what really was saying before about the three perspectives and but they're ultimately only ever being one truth you know so so as you said this is the last legally sanctioned duel in french mm. in french history between uh, jean de carouge who's mm -hmm. matt damon and jacques legree who's adam driver and they're mm -hmm. fighting over you well about events which which you've explained what do we know about marguerite the, the, the woman who you are giving a voice to well it's funny do you know anything at all it's funny that you say they're fighting over me because in the end they're not fighting over her at all you know which i think is what's really interesting at the end of this film is that you realize that it was always about them you know um <laughs> She is the wife of Carouge. I think, you know, what we really wanted to explore within the film was that she is 
she is a fully flesh character and this woman has this experience but isn't defined by it. There was very little about her. Um, we knew that she spoke several languages. We knew that she was very well read. Something that really struck me when I was doing research and I read the book was that there was only ever one painting of her that has over time become completely erased through wear and tear. So there isn't really any real kind of truthful account or image of what she looked like. So in a way, there was a lot of freedom to be had in creating her, but always wanting to make sure that her spirit um, and her sense of character was was very much present. Yes, and if the, and if there was any doubt, I mean, I, I suppose people might guess maybe our knowledge of the 14th century in France is not is not what it should be. Mm. But you were, but women were property. Yeah, completely. and 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 this was an arranged marriage mm -hmm. between you. That that was. That was the situation. You were goods and you were chattels. Yeah, this was this was not a marriage of of love. You know, this was and you you know you see the marriage in two different perspectives in the film, and it was a transaction. It was a sale. You know, and she witnesses that. Um, you know, women. What what happened to Marguerite in in those times was considered um, a violation against her husband, not of her, um, which is despicable. You know, you can't imagine. You can't imagine what that must have been like. Yeah. And then to speak out, you know, then to have the courage to still stand up and say, no, this was wrong. Um, and knowing kind of everything that's at, st at stake and everything that you're up against um, is really, really remarkable. So Ridley, can I ask you about uh, telling the story then from three different angles, the same story, but told from three different perspectives? What was, what was that like to to shoot and to, uh, how did that come over to you as a way of telling the story? You know, I've found over the years that when I cast anybody, and I cast everybody normally in the film, the only, I didn't cast Matt and Ben in this film, but I cast Jodie and Adam. And so I sit and think very carefully about who I'm gonna have. And because what, the, the thing is when you meet with an actor or an actress and you do a read in a room, it's an entirely an artificial situation. So what I want to do is find out as much as I can about them, because I want to know how inventive they are and how, how they think. And I'd watched enough, a lot, actually everything of Jody in her, I know you're fed up hearing about this, but this, those <laughs> shows are fantastic. And I watched these shows thinking, who the hell is this uh, woman? You talk about killing Eve. I watched Eve, the inventive process occur again and again. So, from my point of view, I, I had, honestly, I had cast her by watching something else even before I met her. And Adam Driver, <clears throat> I'm very aware of, of who he is and what he can do, who carries this kind of muscular presence, but actually a beyond charming. So he is the perfect sedu seducer who assumes that every woman will bend to his wishes and ways. So, when, and everyone is cast that way when I make a movie. To me, once I've cast, it's my biggest investment is get, get that. Once I've cast it and, I get, I'm, and I'm right, uh, then I can have a good time just go play tennis. <laughs> <laughs> or, maybe, or maybe do another painting. Yeah. Is it, uh, I want to ask the same, same question to both of you, if I may, uh, Ridley first. Is it, do you think it's possible to tell a story that is authentic and true to the 14th century in a way that is acceptable to audiences of the 21st century? Well, I think a lot of the story still exists. I think things, when you look at it in the bottom line, you think, Christ, things don't change that much. Yeah. I think, and we go again and again on history lessons and we don't bloody learn, do we? We keep repeating the errors that have, of our forefathers, which can be quite recent. Listen, the Second World War is already being forgotten as if it was Napoleonic, right? So I think it's up to us to remind, uh, every, as you know, I look on myself as a filmmaker where it, it's a kind of a bit of a waste if you're not having some kind of uh, information that goes with your material, where you're Im improving the information that comes out to the audience. So the audience is not just entertained with something else, right? 
I, I mean, I can't say the same for Alien because Alien just scared the shit out of you. But you know, the first thing, the first duel I did was fundamentally about the insanity of quarrel and war, where at the end of the film, you, they can't remember what the quarrel was about. So to me, that's a great piece of philosophy yeah. about war. Forgetting what was it about. Mm. Jody, I, I, I guess it's just 20, a 21st century audience would be shocked by so much about the, about life in the 14th century, mm. but particularly the way women are treated. And that's really at the heart of, of this story. Absolutely. But I, I think you're right. I think, you know, when, when we were portraying this story, it is so sensitive as there are many women who will be able to relate to Marguerite and her experience and you have a, a real duty of of oh. care with that and you know it's we have improved in many ways but in many ways we haven't you know women are still fighting for autonomy over their own bodies you know in today's day and age and um I, I think sometimes it makes for uncomfortable viewing and it's um but it, I don't think we should shy away from it you know, I think it is a very, um, it is relative today because the, the yes. like Ridley said, the problem problem hasn't gone. Well said. Mm. Um, and 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 Jody, just on 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 your particular side of the story, can you talk a bit about because it's um, you mentioned that this is a, a screenplay from Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, first one they've done for a while, but mm -hmm. also crucially, uh, Nicole Holofcener is is here and writing. I think specifically mm -hmm. your story. Can you tell us a bit about how that worked? Yeah, I mean, Nicole's wonderful. I think they all, you know, work together a lot because what was interesting was when one perspective changed because a lot of the scenes were exactly the same, it almost always shift, you know, the ne other part of the story. But it was great just to be able to sit down with Nicole and, you know, have a woman's sensibility and have her presence and really try and get underneath what it was like to be a woman in that time and, and experience what she did. Um, and we got on very, very well. Um, so that was a really beautiful, um, you know, kind of relationship to have. Yes. And um, so, yeah. Mm. Uh, Ridley, you've, you've, you've already mentioned the Napoleonic Wars in the course of this conversation, just as I could throw away... Uh, <laughs> reference to we you know wars being forgotten but i think your mind is already there isn't it i'm already prepped and cast i'm ready to go in january <laughs> so and and this is is this called kit bag well the napoleon was heard to have said or quoted more or less that in every foot soldier's kit bag was a a general's baton so that's what he believed because he had come Napoleon was kind of lower middle class out of Corsica and had come from a small cadet school to, to where he got to. By the time he was 30, he already declared himself emperor of France and Europe. Yeah. He was, you know, with all his extraordinary stuff, there's a lot of bad stuff and there's a lot of amazing stuff. France still works with his bureaucracy and his the bureaucratic methods that he designed and they still up kept today and jody you're in that you're there you're yes. josephine is that right yep. yes i am i am um which i'm so i mean i can't i can't wait you know to be able to work with ridley again and have the opportunity to work with joaquin is um and also you know to to delve into josephine and ridley said this before but really try and get under the skin of these characters and what their relationship was, and especially in regards to her relationship towards him, you know, and um, she's such a fascinating woman and there's a lot more information about her than there was with Marguerite, you know, so to be able to kind of go to all those sources and really pull from it is, well, is one Napoleon of is, is, is modern history. You know, mm. if you, there's so much stuff about Napoleon mm. and, and there's a lot of stuff about Josephine. So it's it's really kind of contemporary history, mm. and the script which is, is very forming Europe and the way it's going. Okay, mm. well, a lot a lot to look forward to with that movie. Next, from Jodie Comer and Sir Ridley Scott, is the last duel. Uh, uh, Jodie and Sir Ridley, thank you very much indeed for your time, and no parking tickets this time, Ridley. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you.